Scott Cunningham, founder of Arclight Dynamics here. In this video, we're going to be cutting our first part out. So for starters, you need to set up a cut properly for the type of material that you have and the system that you have. So the first thing I want to do is go into Sheet Cam right here. This is your camming software. Now, this is the software that's going to set up the cut and generate the G code for the control software. So, this is a really quick run through. Um, we have extensive series of training videos on Sheet Cam. I highly, highly recommend that you watch these all the way through and take the time to practice using your machine. Do not try to just start cutting jobs right away, you will have lots of headaches. You have to take the time to get to know the machine. It will save you lots of time and money. So we'll go up to file and we want to go to open job. And we're going to navigate on the desktop. You'll see job files. Double click and open this up. We want to open up the control cabinet pivot tab job. And that will load this job up. So this, a job file is a, a sheet cam file that has a part loaded up and an operation created for it. So we have our part up here and we have our operation down here. Now, like I said, the sheet cam videos will go through these in much more depth, but really what we wanna do is double click on this job that's created down here. What we have to do, this should be set up overall, but there's one really big thing we have to change. We have to pick the right tool. So this is gonna depend on what kind of material you wanna cut this out of. I would recommend cutting for your first cut, doing at least 14 gauge or 16 gauge minimum up to quarter inch steel. So if you have a, for, for us right now, I have a piece of quarter inch steel on the table. But I'm gonna be using 65 amp consumables, so I have to change this tool to the right one. If I click this drop down, I will be able to select the right one. So really important that you pick the right tool because the tool sets the speed and the, the torch height control voltage. If those things aren't correct, then you will not cut out right. So if I go down to 65 amp quarter inch steel, select that, and if I wanna see the settings, I can double -click, click on these three little dots here, and it pulls up the settings for the tool. So all these settings are being preset into the G code for us. It tells us our feed rate, we're gonna cut it 90 inches a minute, it tells us our preset volts, 127 volts. So our torch is going to be looking for that 127 volts and trying to maintain it. So it's very important. Now, you may have, I, I recommend just starting out with normal consumables right now, your standard nozzles, um, which and as opposed to 60, or the, I'm sorry, the fine cut nozzles, you can use the fine cut nozzles you simply have to make sure you scroll down to the bottom here and select fine cut, okay? That's very key. If you're using a fine cut nozzle and shield, you must use the right tool. So for us, we're using 65 amp. That's, we have a 65 amp cutter on this machine and uh, that's what came with it. So we're gonna be cutting out 65 amp quarter inch steel. So I really don't need to change anything else here. I'm gonna change this soft pierce to 100 for right now. And we'll discuss that later. You don't have to change your rules. Um, you leave reverse cut direction checked. Generally your lead ins will be correct. You'll have a small arc lead in and no lead out. And then you just click OK. And so now that tool has been changed and this job is now set up to cut 
at a quarter inch plate with a 65 amp nozzle. If we go over to file and go run post processor, go to the desktop, I'm going to save it right here. I'm going to change it to number two. I'm going to click save. Now I know it's been saved to my desktop. I can close out of this uh, file. It's going to ask me if I want to save my changes to that job. At this point, I'm not. I'm just going to hit no. Um, if you want to save the default tool set, so here's, here's um, I generally just for usually say no. That's the best answer. Um, <clears throat> so now I have my file created and we're ready to set up the code and open up the control system and cut it out. Uh, we're going to open up our command CNC program. I already have mine open up here. And click on it. Before we go any further, I want to do a quick overview of your consumables. Here are basically here are the <clears throat> the five different consumables that you will have inside your torch. Very important that you understand what each one does and that it's installed correctly and that you have the correct consumables. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they try to cut something out but they don't put the right consumables in the torch. So the machine's not going to cut right if you don't do that. So starting on the right hand side, that is your shield cap. What you're looking at is a standard shield cap um, that is for 65 amps uh, or 45 amps. Uh, it will show that labeled on the side. Next to that is your retaining cap. And uh, that is also a consumable. Generally, that won't look like it wears out, but it will wear out, I would say, every two months, if you're cutting heavy, at least, replace that. Because you can't really tell the difference when it wears out, but it will start not isolating the electricity as well as when they're new. Next to that is your nozzle. There is a specific nozzle for each amperage you set your machine to. So there's 45 amp, 65 amp, 85 amp, 105 amp, 125 amp. So you, you really have to make sure that you're picking the, you have the right nozzle. So you can't, if you try to run a 65 amp nozzle at 45 amps, you won't get good cut quality. If you try to run a 65 amp nozzle at 85 amps, it will damage the nozzle and it won't cut out right. So the, basically the holes, the orifices at the end is specifically sized for that type of amperage. So you want to use the right amperage with the right nozzle. Next to that is your electrode. Those uh, electrodes have a small piece of hafnium. You'll see a little silver dot at the end of them. That wears away over time and it can get down maybe a tenth of an inch and then the electrode destroys itself. Uh, so you don't want to ever take an electrode too far. Generally throw them out before you think they're going to blow up because when they blow up they will wreck your nozzle too with it. And last is the swirl ring. The swirl ring is like the retaining cap. It does wear out. It doesn't look like it does, but I would say replace that at least once a month if you're cutting heavy. So. So, quick overview of how you put your consumables together. Um, very important that everything fits together properly, and I highly recommend you make sure you do this right. So, the way I like to do this first is to place my retaining cap into the nozzle, and I press up on a little bit. You'll feel it kind of snug in place. There's a little O-ring on the inside of it that kind of snugs in the spot. Next, take your retaining cap, you're going to take your nozzle, basically. You're going to take your nozzle, drop it down into the retaining cap, and then push your finger down in there. Make sure it fully seats, and then it's all the way at the bottom. It's not kind of in there cockeyed. 
Next, take the electrode, drop that down in there. I like to take my finger and push on the spring at the end to keep everything in place. Lastly, take your shield cap, screw it on the end. Once you have that all set up, carefully slide it on the end. And you uh, can tighten this. Doesn't have to be very tight. Don't wrench on it really hard. You will wreck the threads on the end of this torch. They're brass and they're easily damaged. So very important that now that we've uh, set up our consumables correctly, you can get ready to cut. All right. We have a uh, command CNC loaded up. We're going to go over here to open. I'm going to go to desktop. And I'm going to see my control cabinet pivot tab 2, NGC. NGC is a G code. Very important to remember that. Uh, you can't load up other codes. It will, like, you could make a mistake and load up, say, a DXF file by mistake. It won't, obviously, cut right. You'll see a, a line of code here, but it just it doesn't work. So make sure you're opening NGC files only. You're going to double click on this, brings in the code, pulls it up. So let's first off, if you haven't already, you want to home your machine. So I'm going to jog over to the left. Hit home X, home Y. Now my machine is homed. Gave me a little icon up there. I'm going to jog back over to where I want to cut my part out. I'm going to cut my part out basically right here at the lower left. So I'm going to drop my Z axis down close. And now I'm going to set my part zero. I'm going to zero my X, Y, Z. Okay. So now we want to make sure, we want to do our essentially pre-flight checklist. You want to get in the habit of going through this list. Very important. First, air supply. You have to have very clean, very dry air supply. Okay. So I really highly recommend, you know, we, we sell an air filtration system. It really does a great job as a last resort preventing, you don't want oil or water getting into your plasma cutter, especially don't want oil getting in there. So a lot of this will depend on how good of a compressor you have. If you have a good quality compressor that doesn't throw a lot of oil, you'd be better off. Um, if your compressor is more beat up, throws a lot of oil, you're going to have to have a lot of filters in place to stop that. So you want to have nice, clean, dry air. Next, you want to you want to ensure it's on. Make sure your air pressure is on. Make sure you have at least you, you want to have at least 90 psi, um, and you're going to probably need about. You, ideally, you want to be able to deliver. Um, 10 to 12 CFM at 90 PSI. If you have a smaller compressor, it's going to struggle and it's going to cause air supply issues that will cause cut issues, it will cause errors, all kinds of problems. Next, you want to make sure your plasma cutter is on. There is a big black switch on the back of your plasma. You should have gone through the initial setup guide where you set up your plasma, and so everything should be set up. You want to make sure you have your ground clamp attached to the back of the table. There is a uh, spider ground um, set up back there where you can just simply clamp to it like you show I show in this picture here. Um, looking at the front of your plasma, you want to make sure that your, your, the dial on the right hand side is set to the second one down. Okay. That's your plate cutting setting. You always want to leave it there. Okay, you never want to have it in the other setting. Very important. Always check to make sure that that setting is there. And then you want to check to see your amperage. Now, if you have the arc sync 
technology set up on your system, you will not be able to change this amperage while the arc sync is turned on. You, the control system will change the amperage. And it's indicated right here at the top left of the machine. It shows that the plasma cutter is linked to the computer. Now, if you don't have the arc sync, you have to manually set this amperage. So before you go any further, make sure your amperage matches the consumables and the tool we picked in Sheet Cam. Okay, so we picked a quarter inch tool, 65 amps. We have 65 amp consumables. I'm gonna make sure my machine sets itself to 65 amps. Now this system is set up with the arc sync, so it will automatically set the plasma for me when I first hit the run button, okay? It, a great um, cheat sheet is, you, I'm gonna minimize Command C and C right here. You go down to, I'm gonna minimize, move my steps to cutting apart. This essentially dials out all the steps needed to cut apart and I highly recommend you just kind of peruse through it to make sure that everything's set up and you can use it as kind of a cheat sheet. Okay, so now that we've checked our air, we've checked our plasma, we know our consumables are correct, we know our ground is connected. Oh, one more thing about the ground wire. You cannot have your ground wire coiled up. And that ground wire from the plasma cannot be crossing high power lines. So it can't be crossing the torch line, it can't be crossing the plasma's power line. Okay, so you don't want it coiled up and you don't want it crossing high power lines. And we've zeroed out our machine, we've set our home position, we've set our part zero. I've looked at the machine, I've, there's nothing in the way of making it, it making the cut. I have the correct material loaded up. Once I've done that checklist, then I'm ready to do my cut. I'm gonna move my camera out of the way for just a second here. So, you wanna have your DTHC on, you wanna have it set to auto, and we wanna I'm not gonna have this disabled torch checked because I wanna actually cut this time. You wanna leave your velocity anti-dive checked. And these settings will set to the correct amount for my 65 amp tool once I hit the run button, okay? So I'm currently zeroed out where I want to cut. We've done our checklist, if I hit run, it says, check your settings. Very important. All right, my preset amps changed to 65. My preset volts changed to 127. That is what it was in the tool, okay? And lastly, I'm gonna look on your plaza cutter. It is set to 65 amps. The computer communicated to the plasma and changed it to 65 amps for me. Now, like I said, if you don't have the arc sync, you will have to make sure to manually set that to the right amperage. All right, so now I simply hit resume and the machine's gonna cut. I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna move this up here. So one of the things I want you to watch while it's cutting, it's gonna cut out. You're gonna see your preset bolts, and your preset amps, and then you'll see the actual torch bolts here while it's cutting, okay? So you'll see on the initial hole, the torch bolts won't match up to the 127, but once we do the perimeter, it will come in line with the 127. So we're gonna hit resume and the machine's gonna do its cutting. Okay, machine finishes cut. 
I can hit stop. And I can jog the machine out of the way. Okay. Now, you can go over and check your part out. Your part, that's a little bit connected down here at the end. That sometimes happens on the very end of the cut. I could improve the settings to make that better. So, there's my part. Got some top dross here. A little bit more dross on the back of the part than I would like, but that can also be the type of material that I'm cutting. This is a piece of scrap material. So, you can see I have a nice clean edge all the way around. Cutting your first part. So, I recommend practicing with that. Do the same part, cut it multiple times. Practice pausing in between the cuts. Um, just all the stuff we have talked about, practice, practice, practice. Very important. Try cutting this out on a different type of material. Go back to sheet cam, change that job, and set it up for a thinner piece of material. And practice, practice, practice. Thanks for watching, and I hope that video was helpful. Please remember. Our primary goal is to make your purchase profitable. So don't hesitate to reach out for help. You can reach us at 866-222-2154 or head over to our website where you'll find a complete list of all of our training materials. Thank you.